1970, English blues psych hard rockers Killing Floor released their second of two albums, Out of Uranus, and from it, the track Fido Castro. <laughs> Now that is pretty unique for one of these types of songs. It has kind of a, a riff that's somewhat reminiscent of Whole Lot of Love, but that tsst, 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 yeah, that kind of syncopated uh, like like lock tie hat thing. It keeps on going between that that like jerky progression, that kind of like backward rhythmic feel, and then that and then it flows with those rolls and everything. It's all that I can do to keep from crying. So far, the drummer is the star of the show. I also noticed how, um, for a 1970 record, I'm hearing somewhat of a, like, 1966 kind of garage rock R&B type vibe. Uh, it, like, in the vocals, too. The, the, the vocal seems to be a bit kind of kind of back there in that, uh, like, freak beat era. Someone to save my soul from dying And I'll go be a look at a way It's like he. It's like he's hitting uh, that 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 hi hat or like like a just like a fraction of a second earlier or something before. Okay, um, but the, the irony here is that the credits don't list drummer, they just list percussion, and it's by Bass Smith, who, very interestingly, later turned up in a post-punk band, a decade later, Family Fodder. Yeah, kind of an avant-garde post-punk band. <laughs> Yeah, his uh, the singer's voice kind of has sort of a oh, kind of like a trebly draw to it, uh, like evocative of I don't know, La Fleur de Lis or something, something more kind of in the heavier end of like. 1966-67 um, before like whereas by 1970 um, a lot of um, these like hard rock vocal vocalists of, of like hard rock or bluesy hard rock bands were moving more into that operatic tenor wailing you know um, because uh, by, by this point vocalists like uh, Robert Plant and uh, Ian Gillen were making headway and, and they, they kind of like upped the bar for a lot of vocalists of course a lot of uh singers kind of tried and failed at that, at least initially. Uh, there were some really awkward attempts. Awkward, kind of an awkward transitional phase between, say, the era of Peter Noon and the era of, like, um, Paul Rogers and, and vocalists that really, like, up the bar in terms of range, expressiveness. And, and um, he, luckily, is just... This guy here, um, Billy uh, Thorndycraft, is playing within his, is singing within his abilities. He also is responsible for harp on this. Oh, and Fido Castro is obviously just a play on the name Fidel Castro. Yeah, uh, that that name, th this song title brings up no other matches other than this album. <laughs> Thank you. 
very raw, kind of like simplistic guitar solo, just like uh, two notes or so, you know, back and forth. Um, yeah, I guess uh, if you're like looking for a band that um, kind of combined the best of both worlds, say like mid '60s um, garagey R&B freak beat with um, the hard hard bluesy rock of 1970s, say like a, a middle ground between Downliner Sect and the early Pretty Things. And on one side, and bands like Juicy Lucy, Elias Hulk, um, May Blitz on the other. Yeah, this is the, the, the go-to band for that killing floor. <laughs> This album is played by Mike Clark, and he um, later uh, reappeared. Oh, the same year as this, he was on that album by Orangutan. Yeah, 1970 Hard Rock went off. And um, he later in the 70s appeared in the bluesy pub rock band Salt. Yeah, that put out, put out an EP on Raw Records. So kind of on the margins of, of punk there. <laughs> just hammering those chords, those really simple raw chords and that trebly sound and, and kind of the, the drum just doing sort of that like kind of like Neanderthal bashing against it and then um, interspersing that with all those amazing like snare rolls, yeah, really that raw crisp sound. <laughs> that guitar sound it's kind of like clean and yet gruff at the same time it, it's like a perfect middle it's like a, i i can't think of many guitar sounds that, that that are are so refined and yet um have that rawness about them it's like guitar sounds tend to be either clean electric sound or they tend to be like fuzzed out or they tend to be really gruff crunchy this this kind of like seems to like walk a thin line between uh between the extremes yeah I guess uh, it must be mentioned that there's also somewhat of a like nug like an American garage rock mid-60s influence on this, like out of the Nuggets vein. There are many bands I could, I could name off, but you, you know what I'm talking about. It's all that I can do to keep from crying. People don't realize what's to blame. Yeah. Need someone to save my soul from dying. Offer me a look, you cannot wait. Another person credited on vocals on the album, um, although not just back up, is Stuart McDonald, who plays bass that I've just kind of taken notice to that. Uh, kind of a low in the mix sort of throb that's, uh, you know, backing up our drummer quite well. He only appeared in this band, apparently. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I guess he was also in Salt. Yeah, mainly just the two coming four albums. <laughs> The, the way uh, it, 
just kind of that Neanderthal bashing on those kind of bassy drums during this part. Uh, kind of a, uh, makes me th kind of like a precursor to some of the tribalistic uh, post-punk of the early 80s. Or it also kind of, um, maybe like a missing link between the, tr the Trogs and, uh, because the, tro the, the, the Trogs were doing some of that, like in 1967, yeah. And um, like in the early 80s, bands like Bow Wow Wow would, would bring it back. <laughs> Fido Castro by Killing Floor from their 1972nd album, Out of Uranus. Let's hear another track from the album. Soon There Will Be Everything. <laughs> Once again, very creative percussion dominating the sound, the, not just the pacing, but uh, the sonic detail. <laughs> I hear a Mellotron. I like that echo on his vocal, how it, how it meshes with that Mellotron in the background. Also faint, you know. I love the way those Mellotron layers kind of rose up during that bridge. Okay, so I'm, at this point I'm hearing, I'm getting more of kind of like a Cressida meets Spring type vibe. Yeah. Okay, maybe more like a Cressida meets Gracious type vibe. Yeah. This is a little bit uh, more kind of punctual and aggressive than spring would ever get. Okay, I think the bass is playing a more active role in this track. Boom, doom, 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 doom. Yeah, it is is really like moving things along and and providing that like the the underbelly of the track. sound was just so beautiful the way it stretched out and I love the way like the, the vocals and the guitar were like doubling up on those really like uh, uh, tight bars there <laughs> For the uh, midsection, we have basically like a, a freak beat type of uh, uh, guitar riff, you know, and uh, with um, that Mellotron, that, that, that's, that's a unique uh, combination, and a bit of Hawaiian twang in the, in the lead. <laughs> is really 
really moving around the um, harmonic space of, of these chords. <laughs> great roles. Free like the sun. The lyrics are not praying anywhere. It's all. It's almost like the vocalist is an apparition in this. The way he's he's kind of like blended into this uh, kind of like hazy uh, sonic, you know, space. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Killing Floor, kind of in a, in a more like psych psychedelic uh, vein right there, with uh, Soon There Will Be Everything from their 1970 release Out of Uranus, and before that, uh, another track from the album, Fido Castro, yes, uh, Killing Floor, one of the, out of the Uranus, um, one of the finest uh, albums in 1970 out of the UK, I will say, and I've heard like uh, about 200 albums from the UK from that year. Yeah, just full of great songs, and very much a step up from their first album. Yeah, their, their first album was fairly, like, routine, uh, like, early hard rock, blues rock. Uh, but this, uh, the songs were a lot more creative, I found. Um, they went through quite a lot of uh, lineup changes in the space. And they, they were around for two more years, but nothing further came from the band. Um... Anyway, yeah, uh, so many uh, talented acts that were emerging around this time that put out just like one or two albums and, and then disappeared. And so many other bands that were releasing their first albums and would go on to like have an unabated 15 year album a year streak. Yeah, um, sometimes I wonder what would have happened if the bands in the first category traded places with the bands in the latter category and and how the yeah yeah what if this band had gone on uh for like another 16 years and genesis had broken up after a trespass say and how would trespass be uh viewed among collectors and fans of that era people you know crate diggers and such yeah Anyway, for more rubies and sapphires from the two Killing Floor albums, see the directory of albums by English K artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard. The interplay, the production techniques, the intricacy, the um, just overall dynamics and, and riffs and everything. Which was your favorite passage? Yeah. And the lyrics, if you have any observations about them, if you caught them or or if you know them um, somehow. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled trimaximist, signing off. <laughs>